we already know about transportation in humans. So what about transportation in plants? Now we know that plants make their food in their leaves. And for doing that, they require sunlight, chlorophyll, carbon dioxide and water. Plants absorb this water through the soil by their roots. So have you ever wondered how do these plants transfer this water that they absorb by their roots to their leaves? If the distance between the organs in contact with the soil, that is roots, and the chlorophyll containing organs, that is leaves, is small, then water can be transferred from the roots to the leaves by simple diffusion. But this distance is very large in tall plants. So for such plants, plants have transportation system in them. In this lesson, we'll study transportation system in plants in detail. As I just mentioned that plants need to transport water from the roots to the leaves. Now plants do so with the help of a transportation tissue. This tissue which is used to transport water and dissolve minerals is known as xylem tissue. The xylem tissue consists of two types of cells, vessels and tracheids. These are elongated cells which form a continuous column for water conduction. Now, as water has to move from the roots up to the leaves, that is water has to move against the gravity. So how does water move against the gravity inside the xylem tissue? To move water up the xylem tissue, some pressure or suction is required. So plant does this by two ways. First, by root pressure or second by transpiration pull. Let's first see how water moves up by root pressure. The root cells in contact with the soil take up the ions. So as a result, now root cells have more ions and less water in them. While soil particles have more water and less ions in them. So as a result, water moves from the area of high concentration to the area of its low concentration. That is, water moves from soil particles to the root cells. This movement of water from the area of high concentration to low concentration is known as osmosis. Now this difference of water and ions is carried out throughout the water column and thus the water is transported from the roots to the leaves. But this pressure is not enough to carry water in tall plants. So in such plants, plants follow some other mechanism that is transpiration pull to carry water from the roots to their leaves. Now to understand what is transpiration pull, let's first understand what is transpiration. The loss of water in form of water vapor from all the aerial parts of the plant that is the leaves, stem and flowers is known as transpiration. Transpiration in leaves mainly occur through stomata. Now due to the loss of water molecules from all the aerial parts of the plant, these parts are left with less water in them. As a result, this creates suction. And because of this suction, water is pulled upwards from the xylem cells of the roots to the leaves. This is very much similar to the way we suck drinks with a straw. Now transpiration is very essential for the plants because it helps in absorbing nutrients from the soil. Moreover, transpiration also helps in regulating the temperature in the plant. So now after studying both the methods, that is root pressure and transpiration pull, can you tell me that which method is more prevalent during the daytime and which method is more prevalent during the night time? It's very easy to guess. As we know that transpiration occurs in plants during daytime, so transpiration pull occurs during daytime and root pressure is more prevalent during night time. As we all know that plants also need energy. Plants derive this energy from the food that they synthesize during the process of photosynthesis. Now there should be some method by which they can transport this food that they synthesize in the leaves to the other parts of the plant. 
This transportation of food and the soluble products of photosynthesis is known as translocation. Food is stored in the plants in the form of sucrose. So, plants transfer sucrose all over their body. The tissue responsible for the transport of food is phloem tissue. This phloem tissue has two types of cells, sieve tube and companion cells. These cells also transport amino acids and other substances in the storage parts of the roots. They also transport it to the fruit, seeds and other growing organs. For example, sucrose is transported by the phloem tissue to the growing buds as they need energy to grow. This transportation of food through phloem tissue is achieved by using energy from ATP. Unlike physical forces that are used to transport water through the xylem tissue. Now let's see how food is transported through the phloem tissue. Now when the food is synthesized in the leaves, it is to be transported to the sieve tubes of the phloem tissue. Now as these sieve tubes are already filled with the food, so this food is transported from low concentration in the leaves to their high concentration in the sieve tubes. Thus, this transport requires energy from ATP. Now, water from the surrounding xylem cells enter these sieve tubes through osmosis. And now, from here this food solution is transported to all the parts of the plant. This water serves as the transporting medium in the plants. Similarly, as blood serves as the transporting medium of food in us. So, in this lesson, we have seen that water is transported throughout the plant body by xylem tissue and food is transported throughout the plant body by phloem tissue. Let's quickly summarize. Xylem tissue has two types of cells, vessels and tracheids. Now, there are two ways to transport water from the roots to the leaves by xylem. First, root pressure. Second, transpiration pull. Similarly, phloem tissue has two types of cells, sieve tubes and companion cells. But unlike xylem tissue, the phloem tissue uses energy to translocate the food throughout the plant body.